Okay, um, yet again, due to the shuffle in schedule, uh, we're going to rearrange things a little bit here. This is not actually week six. This is week five. Um, contact stresses. <clears throat> For instance, I ordered new contacts before I came to Maine. I had them shipped to Maine, but then they got back ordered, so they're not going to arrive here until after we're home. These are contact stresses. But that's not the contract stresses we're talking about. We're talking about when two pieces are pushing on each other pretty hard. Um, what, are the stre what are the compressive stresses um, at that interface? Uh, so let's back up a bit and just talk about surface failure in general. Um, and there's a whole lot of ways that surfaces can fail, right? We've been talking about nice, neat, clean, you know, uh, bending stresses. But um, there's a lot more ways that, that things can fail. Uh, corrosion, right? If you have ever owned a car in Wisconsin or you know somebody who owns a car in Wisconsin, um, you know that corrosion is a big deal. Um, if you own anything that's made out of metal and you live near the ocean, um, you know, corrosion is a big deal. Um, what that is, is, you know, it, generally it's the oxidation of uh, some metal, typically iron, um, but, uh, you know, aluminum oxi oxidizes too. So <clears throat> uh, a chemical or electrochemical reaction. Uh, and then we can coat it, right? Um, and that's the best way to paint or coatings or powder coat or something like that. Uh, cavitation, that's one of my favorites, right? Um, the pitting on surface of propellers and pump components, right? That's because, um, so, so very rapid uh, boiling, expand, uh, condense, and collapse. Right, so in very, very low pressures, we can boil water at room temperature, right? Um, but then if the pressure goes back up, that bubble collapses uh, and it makes a big shock. Um, and so uh, there, in some ways, there's no way to avoid that, right? Here's an example. Um, so this is due to bubbles collapsing. Bubbles collapsing there, right? Um, and this is an iron propeller. Uh, and it, it just bang, 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 bang. After many, many years, thousands and thousands, millions of revolutions, um, it looks like this and things, you know, stop working very well, right? Obviously, this is not a very good hydrodynamic uh, situation. Um, contact stress. Uh, that's the one where we're, we're going to focus on today, really. Um, and that is um, when we, you know, push really hard on two points. For instance, I've got two spheres and I push them against each other. What's the contact point? Contact at a point there, right? So that means that um, the area is zero, which means that force over area goes to an infinite. Well, yeah, so we can get some really, really high stresses uh, at this theoretical point or line contact. Um, and uh, so we just need to avoid this. Right, um, avoid and harden. Right, uh, yeah, uh, and then wear is when things are sliding on each other. Right, um, you know, brake shoes, uh, bearings, um, to some extent, uh, gear teeth rubbing on each other. Um, you know, the, the piston rings rubbing on the inside of the cylinder in an IC engine. Uh, and that's where it's adhesive or abrasive, right? Adhesive means they kind of get welded together. Welded and broken. And abrasive is just broken. Right? If there's enough pressure, um, you know, it can heat up and actually weld these microscopic things together. That's adhesive removal material. Um, and then abrasive is where they just rub on each other and break little chunks off, right? Um, lubrication, oil. That's why you have oil in your car. Um, you use materials that are, can be very, very smooth or that are very slippery uh, and just avoid that kind of stuff. Um, so some applications of contact stresses, they're all over the place, right? And not just in car engines. Um, this is a really big deal, artificial hip here. Um, you know, so this is metal on metal. This is metal on... Um, so this is metal, actually titanium, and this is Teflon. Uh, so for artificial hips, um, they actually don't do this anymore. They, they spin it around. So now they, they put the ball on this 
Um, so these get switched in a modern replacement hip. Um, so uh, there's, there's people who dedicate their careers just to artificial joints and reducing the wear. Cartilage is an amazing thing. Amazing how slippery and, and what a great material cartilage is. Um, we have not quite a, you know, achieved that level of um, uh, abrasion resistance there. Um, so, um, yeah, w what I think is really cool about this, right, you have two spheres or two cylinders uh, in contact with each other, and the cylinders contact at a line, the spheres contact at a point. Of course, we know that doesn't happen. They must deflect a little bit. Um, and this was all determined by uh, Heinrich Hertz when he was 24 years old. Amazing. He did this all analytically. He just thought about, I wonder how these two things kind of interact. Uh, and he went through and calculated all this stuff as a 24-year-old. Um, so uh, what affects it? Obviously, the more force. Um, obviously, the stiffnesses of the materials. Poisson's ratio. This is one of those situations where Poisson, you know, we, we can't neglect it. Uh, it's a big deal. Um, and then, you know, the radius of curvature as you might expect. So um, everything you might expect that affects the contact stresses, um, they do. All right. Um, so because there's so many variables, right, there's the force, the two Young's moduli, the two Poisson's ratios, and the two radii. Um, holy cow, that's a lot to put in there. So we're going to start to, um, you know, kind of bundle these up, right? So we're going to say this delta parameter um, is the Young's moduli and the um, Poisson's ratios kind of get all bundled up into this delta parameter. Um, the R equivalent, an equivalent radius, is the sum of these two, um, just like resistors get added up. Um, and then, yeah, those are the big ones. And these are just algebraic conveniences, so, you know, so we don't have to write everything out. Um, and we discovered that the half width of the contact area, right, so from the center out to here, so this width right here, um, works out to be um, all this, right? And we're not gonna, I mean, I, I don't think I could derive this, maybe, but I doubt it. Uh, but it, it all works out like this, so it's 1.13 times blah, 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 right? Why do I care about that? If I'm trying to figure out, um, you know, lubrication problems, uh, maybe wear problems, how big to make these things, I don't know. What I'm really interested in is the maximum pressure, right, P0. Where does the maximum pressure happen and what is it, right? Uh, and that works out to be calculated this way, uh, where we have a delta, uh, we got the two radii, um, and the force. <clears throat> so, um, I'm concerned with maximum pressure, right? And um, this is a, kind of a neat plot. Um, it's a little hard to read. So this is, um, if I draw this, as we go down away from the surface here, that's going down away from the surface there. Uh, and then it's all in terms of B, right? So remember, what is B? B is the total distance or the... the the radius of the circle of contact, if you will, right? And then this is all non-dimensionalized in terms of that radius. Uh, and so what is the pressure? This, of course, um, from zero to the negative direction here, this is compressive. And then shear is considered... Um, just in case the shear stress winds up being the, the dominant thing, right? Um, but these are ultimate failures, and so ultimate failures um, oftentimes are due to normal stresses, so we'll just look at P here, right? Um, what does this mean? The stress in the Z direction, um, this is... Uh, why are X and Y different there? Z, do we have a coordinate system? Um, X, Y, Z... Here's Z here, right? So it's the vertical compressive stress um, is the biggest one here, the vertical compressive stress, and it's compressive, uh, it's maximum there, and then it slowly tapers off until we get far, far away from the surface, uh, and then they all kind of taper off, right? And I think that's actually, yeah, that's it. 
Um, so this is how these contact stresses are calculated. Um, we'll apply these to um, gear teeth uh, a little